I'm going to be doing some stuff to this. This is a home speaker subwoofer slash amplifier. It's by Dora Brand, as you can probably tell. And uh, well, I'm going to use this as speakers for my computer. You can see I've removed the screws from the back so I can get into the insides and everything. Now, this is a pretty crappy thing. Not just because it's by Dora Brand, but um, looking on the front here, these are the only features it has. On off button, source selector and volume. It does come with a remote that has a lot more features, but we won't go into that right now. Now under this table here is where I'm planning on having it. I'm going to make, put some screws in and um, put it there. So it's going to be quite difficult when I want to turn this thing on or turn the volume up and down or whatever because obviously I have to reach under there and get, get to the buttons and everything. Now what I'm going to do is circuit bend this so I won't have to use any of these buttons here. Now, have you noticed that it has outputs for five speakers let's just take a little look at this um, a little bit of a closer look at this these inputs here look like they would be for the um, five speakers right wrong there's DVD in aux in and on the front there's another input right there but these are just ordinary stereo inputs they are not surround inputs there's not even a coax or optical in so whenever you connect anything to say DVD in right that will just come out of all the right speakers and left it will just come out of all the left speakers sure you will get surround sound but not true independent speaker surround sound so really this is essentially only a 2.1 system anyway let's take a look inside to see what I'm going to do so this is what it's like inside there's two circuit boards this one is the control board and this one is the where the power supply and the amplifier are now I've done some voltage tests and um, seems to be a split rail power supply because I've got negative 15 and positive 15 volts on the meter here are where the amplifier chips are I apologize for the terrible focus of this camera now these chips at the back here are the amplifier chips there's three here and three here, making a total of six amplifier chips because there are six speakers. You can see the woofer or the subwoofer or whatever you want to call it at the back of this. So even though it has separate amplifier chips for each speaker, it's still only a 2.1 system. What I'm going to do is find a way to circuit bend this so I don't have to use these buttons here. And, um, well, so that's what I'm about to do right now. Okay, so one thing I've got to figure out is actually where the hell the audio actually gets into this board here, which has got the amplifier chips on it. You can see that there's three ribbon cables that connect the two boards together. This one I've identified as the one that carries the power to this particular board. Seems to have a split rail 15 volt supply, and uh, which is constantly going in there. There is also a 5 volt supply right here. And it's the only one in this entire thing that actually turns off when you put this thing into standby. Everything else stays on, so I'm not exactly sure what it's for yet, but... Anyway, let's just um, take a look further inside so we can see what I've found out about this. I've discovered that these amplifier chips are the TDA-2030A. As I said before, there's the three ribbon cables that connect the two boards together, so there has to be a lot of interaction going on between these two boards, so this can, so this thing can actually make some noise. I found the speakers and the um, inputs are actually connected to this board. That's where the phono or whatever you want to call them jack plugs are, and that's where the speaker terminals are right there. So I'm pretty sure that this cable here, um, this one. This one here that I'm pulling is the one that carries the um, signal to the speakers from this amplifier here, and I'm sure that this ribbon cable here carries the audio signal to this board. Well, okay, I'm certainly making progress with this thing. You can see I've disconnected the cable where the signal comes into this amplifier. Now I've discovered that three of these wires on this thing need to be connected to ground. Okay. Now, turn it on. 
Now if I unplug this wire here, as soon as I unplugged it, it started to buzz, so I turned it off immediately. So I'm not exactly sure why um, it does that when um, this isn't connected to the ground, but... Well, anyway, each step is a step closer to making this my computer speakers. Okay, well, I think I've solved the mystery of what this 5 volt bit is for. When this thing is turned on, 5 volts comes along this wire and into the board here, and I've followed the circuit round, and i found that it goes into a whole bunch of transistors that are along here, which I think is the preamp. So I'm pretty sure that that 5 volt is to power the preamp. And when you turn this thing on to standby or on, it just turns the preamp off or on. So anyway, I'm going to make a little 5 volt supply to replace this. And see if it works. And now you should be able to see that I have now added a voltage regulator to the 5 volt bit. So that will provide 5 volts to the preamp. And that is constantly on when the switch is turned on. So now that there is no need to use this button right here. So that should be completely overridden. But unfortunately there's no time to test this because it's, it's quite late at night. So we'll have to test this some other time. So until next time, goodbye.